In February of 1988, the United States was conducting freedom of navigation missions to assert its right to innocent passage through the Black Sea when they got intercepted by Soviet resistance. American cruiser USS Yorktown and destroyer USS Karen had been instructed to deliberately cross the Soviet territorial waters in Crimea, an action that the Soviets found confrontational. Without delay, Soviet frigates Bezovetny and SKR-6 were deployed to intercept the trespassers and demand that they turn around, as the coastal nation only recognized the passage of warships in designated sea lanes. However, the Americans believed that there was no legal basis for this and defended their international right to transit the area. It was then that the annoyed Soviets decided to take action, and it was all caught on camera. Tensions rise. The United States and the Soviet Union continually clashed during the years of the Cold War, and their passive-aggressive diplomacy had the entire world hanging by a thread. During the conflict, the US government considered that some countries asserted jurisdictional boundaries beyond traditional claims, and wanted to change that. Given that diplomatic approaches had proven ineffective, the US started an informal program in 1979 to promote the, quote, rights and freedoms of navigation and overflight guaranteed to all nations under international law. Furthermore, if nations avoided operations at sea and in the air in disputed areas, it was possible that a new customary international law could emerge, and the US didn't like the idea. In the 1980s, American warships crossed the Black Sea through the straits connecting from the Mediterranean. Twice or three times a year, the ships would claim the right of innocent passage in coastal states by, quote, showing the flag. Beyond asserting their right to free passage, U.S. naval activity in the Black Sea served another purpose. The 1936 Montreux Convention regarding the regime of the Straits determined that the Straits in the region, the Dardanelles and the Bosporus, were indeed an international waterway. And as a U.S. government official said, quote, if you don't periodically reaffirm your rights, you find that they're hard to revive. However, Soviet legislation differed significantly from international agreements. In the rules of navigation and sojourn of foreign warships in the territorial waters and internal waters and ports of the USSR, the Soviet Council of Ministers defined the specifics of the right of innocent passage. The 1983 Act acknowledged this right for foreign warships in restricted Soviet territorial waters, including the Baltic, the Sea of Okhotsk, and the Sea of Japan. Incidentally, the Black Sea did not have any designated sea lanes for innocent passage, and American warships were under constant surveillance from Soviet vessels and aircraft. Moreover, the Soviet Union considered the U.S. presence in the Black Sea a deliberate disregard of its policies and an attempt to undermine improving relations between Washington and Moscow. When diplomatic exchanges weren't enough, the Americans deemed it necessary to conduct a freedom of navigation program, which only increased the tension between the two superpowers and resulted in the famous Black Sea bumping incident of February 1988. However, that was not the first time that USS Yorktown and USS Karen found themselves in trouble with their Soviet counterparts. Two years before. On March 10, 1986, the Ticonderoga-class cruiser USS Yorktown and the Spruance-class destroyer USS Karen entered the Turkish Straits and crossed into the Black Sea. The Kravak-class frigate Latni followed them closely. Three days later, Yorktown and Karen trespassed the Soviet boundaries. While innocent passage is defined as transiting a nation's territorial waters without conducting military activities, the U.S. ships entered Soviet territorial waters with their main armament pointed at the Soviet coastline. For over two hours, the vessel sailed along the Crimean Peninsula within six miles of the coast, even facing the Dzorny and Ismail border guard ships, and Captain Zhurilev, the commander of Latni, reported the event to his superiors. Commander-in-Chief of the Soviet Navy, Vladimir Chernavin, was reportedly aware that the order for the American warships to cross the Soviet border came from Secretary of Defense Kaspar Weinberger, with the consent of President Ronald Reagan. After the incident, two press conferences took place. 
U.S. Charge d'Affaires Richard Combs was summoned to the Soviet Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where he received the Soviet protest. The nation claimed that such a flagrant violation of their territorial waters, quote, was of a demonstrative, defiant nature and pursued clearly provocative aims. Furthermore, Chernavin stated that, quote, the innocent passage of foreign warships through the territorial waters of the USSR is permitted only in specially authorized coastal areas, which have been announced by the Soviet government, and there are no such areas in the Black Sea off the coast of the Soviet Union. The United States' official reply was, quote, the transit of the USS Yorktown and USS Karen through the claimed Soviet territorial sea on March 13, 1986, was a proper exercise of the right of innocent passage, which international law, both customary and conventional, has long accorded ships of all states. An article reporting on the incident in the American Journal of International Law argued that the course of the warships was lateral, as proven by a map published in a Russian newspaper. It shows no indication of expressly infringing the internal waters or ports of the Soviet Union. Additionally, the American embassy in the USSR received instructions that the U.S., quote, would not want to lend any validity to a Soviet position that their domestic law was at all relevant in determining U.S. navigational rights under international law. The Incident In February of 1988, Yorktown and Karen embarked on another Freedom of Navigation mission south of Crimea. As stated by the United Nations conventions, warships could leave sea lanes in innocent passage, but the Soviet Union still disagreed. Soviet naval vessels would routinely shadow American ships in the region. But the incident on February 12th with Yorktown and Karen was different. The Soviets believed that the two American warships in their territorial waters were armed with more firepower than allowed by previous treaties. Furthermore, they thought they had the authority to clear unwelcome ships in their territory. As the New York Times reported at the time, the U.S. ships, quote, entered the 12-mile limit claimed by the Soviet Union as part of a Navy policy of occasionally asserting the right of passage in waters exceeding the three-mile territorial limit recognized by the United States. Footage taken that day on board the U.S. warships shows how Soviet frigates intercepted the Americans, which had considerably larger ships. Bezevetny warned Yorktown that she would strike her if they didn't leave. Meanwhile, SKR-6 confronted Karen, which ignored the threat and responded, quote, I am engaged in innocent passage consistent with international law. At roughly 10 a.m., SKR-6 rammed into Karen's port side aft, scraping the paint on the American ship's hull. Meanwhile, Bezevetny was tracking Yorktown, and as she closed in to about 50 feet, she slammed into her port side. The collision caused minor damage to Yorktown's hull, but two of her harpoon missile launchers were rendered unusable. As for the frigate, her starboard anchor was torn apart. The captain of the Bezevetny later recalled, quote, Many members of the crew of Yorktown were on the upper deck, smiling and waving, taking pictures of us with cameras and video cameras. In a word, the Americans behaved as if they were participating in a show for entertainment. The Americans then carried on with their mission, continuing their transit and not leaving Soviet waters until noon. Aftermath News of the incident quickly spread within the Navy, and Admiral James Fago would later say that it was, quote, somewhat of a seminal event. Jerry Hendricks, a retired Navy captain, explained that even though there was an inherent danger to the physical contact between the ships, the maneuver was, in fact, a display of high-degree professionalism. Per the international agreements, it was required that ships transiting an innocent passage maintain course and speed. But Hendricks clarified that it was the Soviets' duty, quote, to make contact with the Americans in the safest manner possible, and then attempt to use their own masts, their engines, and their rudders to move the Americans out of the way. Ironically, the event prompted the two superpowers to reach common ground and settle several pending agreements regarding potential disputes at sea. Nevertheless, according to Hendricks, the U.S. Navy grew less concerned about another conflict of the sort during the following decades, as these ships were superior in size to other navies, which had shifted to smaller ships. However, tensions have risen again in recent times with the growth of the Russian and Chinese navies, increasing the risk of another disagreement. But as then-Defense Secretary Frank Carlucci stated, quote, If we start backing off, 
we will eventually lose some of the rights that are absolutely essential for our freedom of navigation. Thank you for watching our video. Please leave us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more fascinating historical content.